Good morning, everybody. Good evening. Good afternoon. Wherever, wherever you are, <laughs> all around the world, we are very excited to have you back with us again for Adobe Live. Today we have Nick Longo as part two out of two. We are going to continue building out a beautiful walk-up pasta spaghetti bar. I'm really excited to dive into it today. Stomach's growling already, man. <laughs> Nick has already had his pasta today, yep. so. You guys, if you haven't had your pasta yet, by the end of the stream, you're definitely going to be wanting to make some. So I guarantee it. <laughs> come with full hearts and empty stomachs. Yes. We're about to have a really good time. <laughs> what other punny catchphrases can I do? With this? You're just full of them yesterday and today, dude. Exactly. You got, you got your work cut out for you, man. Yeah. We're going to definitely have a lot of puns, have a lot of fun with it. Steve, yeah. Anissa, Paulo, thank you, everybody. Taylor, welcome, welcome, welcome. If you guys are watching on YouTube, come on over to Behance dot net slash live to come interact with our chat over here. We'd love to have you and just chat with you. We have ask any questions you have. Nick is very, very like big about giving you kind of feedback and answers in real time. Yeah. So whatever Let's we can do, do to like engage with you, absolutely come on in, hang out with us. Also, if you're just tuning in now, we have a couple more streams at the end of the day today. Uh, we've got XD Daily Creative Challenge with Peter Del Tondo, draw along with Kyle Webster, and rework it with Jesus and Claudi from Print My Soul. So definitely stick around, hang out with us for that. Um, yeah, do you, Nick, do you want to give us a little kickoff on where we left off for yesterday? Yeah. So we started yesterday with uh, a little brand exploration of something we thought was quite topical for the moment now. Uh, this idea of how you can help your clients either adjust or pivot or change, or even a brand new company that is kind of reacting to current situations in the restaurant field or food or beverage. And what we're doing is we're gonna help a, a, small, a small restaurant uh, develop and make a walk-up pasta uh, bar menu uh, window. So the idea here is it's very uh, easy and convenient to get uh, takeout order. And some of the stuff we were showing was right here in this, um, this deck here, and we were, inspired by this new phenomenon of walk-up windows popping up all over the world, really. I mean, like this is kind of a, talk about a, uh, you know, a topic that is kind of widespread everywhere. Um, people have to get creative and do something different. Um, so we went through this whole process and saw that there were tons of articles, great stuff here. Uh, my plan was to kind of give you guys a shortcut of how to create something very quickly as far as a brand and brand assets for someone. Um, I'm noticing, and I think we were talking about that yesterday, Alex, is like, uh, you know, people have to react very quickly with what's happening. And if we, as their design partner, can help them out, you know, we're really doing them a, a really huge favor. And I think it's just builds your reputation even better. You know? Yeah, absolutely. Especially whenever you're thinking about it as a designer, what is the problem you're trying to solve? Knowing that people are, you know, apprehensive to going to actual restaurants, if you can grab their attention while they're walking by on the street, how can exactly. you engage with them really quickly? How do you stand out on a busy road or anything like that? These are all great things to like kind of consider for when you're building this brand and the design systems around it. Yeah, and I guess there's like, uh, there's no reason why this can't give you that same experience, even though it's abbreviated, even though it's small, um, it might not, you know, what I always love to say is digital and all the stuff that you do for a brand makes you uh, kind of even the playing field. You can look like as big as you want, small as you want, niche as you want, you name it, all in your branding. Absolutely. Yeah. And if you guys are just tuning in after watching the Andrew Hawk Rattle uh, Daily Creative Challenge, we are gonna be reviewing Daily Creative Challenge entries this afternoon in a couple Excellent. of moments. So and at the end of the stream. So, yeah. <laughs> I forgot my travel hat because uh, or if we, we need props, Alex. We're, I know. We need to we're get not, our we're like, not coming hiking in backpacks here, yeah. and <laughs> our walking sticks and everything. Yeah. I love that Nick, uh, that Andrew has been taking us all the way around the world 
definitely check Especially out the challenge. Yeah. <laughs> the Transform and rotate tools. You'll see us use them or you'll see Nick use them probably throughout his project today, but definitely contribute, challenge yourself, do the creative challenge. And we look forward to looking at your interest yeah. this afternoon. All right. We good to go? Let's, let's get into it. Let's do it, man. Also, We're right here. Can you talk about the brand architecture or like archetype that you did yeah. and then that book that you have? Because I think yeah, a lot we'll of people do a, found we'll it really do interesting. A, we'll do a brief kind of, um, and I'll grab that here while we're talking about it. Um, one of the big things I've always done as kind of a secret sauce when it comes, ooh, see, see we're talking ooh, pasta again. I love it. Jeez, man, it never ends. It never ends. Um, I, I'm a big believer in this idea of uh, choosing a brand archetype for your brand. And this is the book. It's called archetypes of branding you can find it on amazon um i probably should be getting a a, a little cut of this book now because i've seemed to be uh uh maybe the reason why, why it's spiking in sales i hope let's see, <laughs> let's 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 give it a try um, uh, it helps you understand if you are developing a brand and you need to communicate not only better to the end result and the consumer but more importantly sometimes even your client if if they're not in your language yet as far as us as designers this book helps you think of the brand as a personality if they were a person if they were a famous person or, or some kind of a archetype of a personality who would they be so i chose this idea of the liberator because if you look at some of the content that a liberator does they are the voice of the common good they champion for people they're ahead of the curve and this great line that just tied in so perfectly with what we're doing they don't see walls but they rather see windows of possibility so when i saw that i was like yeah shows the right one <laughs> it kind of works uh here's some other values you know they like to shatter myths they ch challenge the status quo and the cool thing about this and why i keep this in my illustrator file as i'm working is these are great nuggets i can pull from when i'm writing a tagline or if i need something to add to a secondary logo you've got all this great content we've built up understood it and then we went into the vibe and we just kind of showed you know we want to be in this area we want to be simple we want to be scalable we don't want to get too dynamic and too intricate and too detailed in this just based on the impact we want to make it and then we talked about voice a little bit the names we're going with uh veluce which means fast quick in italian and they're also going with quanto quanto there's a great saying called quanto basta that means as much as needed. And I think when I order pasta, that's pretty much what I think about. But uh, we're going with those two words, those two names. And um, what we did was I started bringing in sketch work uh, right from my iPad or wherever I do it. Um, I don't know about yet. Are you do you consider yourself a pretty good sketch artist when it comes to this stuff? Or where do you fall as far as your drawing abilities? Oh, I hate my drawing abilities. <laughs> well, we know we we know you sketch digitally now, right? Yeah, like kind of, so, yeah, exactly. I I prefer to just start working in Illustrator from the start. So yeah, it depends on like I I think you're we're all our own worst critics when it comes to stuff. Yeah, but I think it depends on the art style. I'm not. I wouldn't call myself an Illustrator Illustrator, but I can I can get down with certain things. I can yeah. kind of compensate my way through things. So I yeah, can get enough. I, I yeah. I'm the same. Oh. I've, I was never the drawer, like kind of designer. I, when, when you make the move to digital and you're, you're, you see like all oh, these tools all help you now, uh, uh communicate better. Uh, they give you this chance to look a lot better. Um, my, yeah. my, I find that going back to sketching and as a teacher, I, I have to practice what I preach. Cause I, I do tell them, especially younger designers, you, you shouldn't go straight to the art boards. You should do something in, in, if you have the time. Um, yeah. and this is my, this is my level. I mean, like I, I have no problem with it to me. It's just getting the idea out on paper first. And you can see, we just explored a bunch of stuff. And what I like to do is like, just fade those back a little bit. I tent the opacity and just start building, you know, like right over them and start seeing yeah. if anything works. Um, we found was, that, go ahead, man. I, I was thinking about this yesterday because you know, yeah. everybody does little design things differently, right? Yeah. Because you've already done all this, like kind of legwork in your sketches. Yes. You can quickly be like, all right, that didn't work. I don't even want to clutter my artboard. Right. You're right. already taking that step out of the equation. Yeah. Like, I'm ready to focus and start solidifying these ideas, right? I've got yeah. kind of the legs underneath. Yeah. But because I kind of take the different approach, 
my artboards look like a complete no man's land. It is yeah, just yeah. a disaster zone of shapes and half baked concepts and all these little widgets and things and boobobs and <laughs> ding dongs over everywhere. You know, like it's just like everything. It's so hard. But with exactly. yours, like you've got literally just one artboard that you're kind of working off of just to say, I've got my sketches here and I've got yeah. some more finessed and more finalized digital assets all on one artboard. For me, I get rid of the artboards and I just do the command shift H or whatever, and then just have everything white. And then I go to the far left corner and just start yeah. moving things around. Yeah. And yeah. It just is a disaster until I, I think I, st I still technically do that. I, I, I can, I, I think we've, we probably have comparable artboards <laughs> when, when we're at that stage. Yeah. And I, I think too, what, what I wanted to challenge myself was, was how do you streamline that process when maybe the client does need something rather quickly in a few yeah. days, not a few weeks. And Absolutely. so, when you when you focused in more, you're spending less time on this stage because you've already done somewhat of the the venting of some of this stuff, you know. Yeah. So yeah, so we were we had a ball kind of figuring some of the favorites out. You can see some of the graphics we were messing around with. Um, the the to me, I think sometimes like the the some of the ideas might really sing well better in the sketch, and then you try it out, and you're like, eh. You know, so it's just kind of oh, wow. not working. Um, but we had a few. And then the cool thing was, is I, I also do this. I'll bring in uh, a pre-selected amount of some fonts and some typography, even some hand ones. So anything here, I kind of messed around with on the iPad, uh, yeah. on like Illustrator Draw or something and uh, send it to library. And then that way I've got some cool stuff to start messing around with as well. So what we're gonna do today is I'm gonna try to take some of our favorites where we are and we're gonna start building out maybe how these are gonna look in a presentation, how we're gonna present these to the client. And so I think I, oh, and then I, I also do this. I bring in like random things from libraries and art of the past, maybe yeah. something that wasn't approved or never made it through to a final logo. I never want to use anything that was already used. Um, and I just like to have them on hand. So the first one we liked was this kind of idea here. We we wanted this idea of maybe the penne pasta with the flag creating what looks like a V if we're going to do the Veluche um, one as one of them, right? So what I did was I started messing around with that logo and I was just, this is kind of my structure of what I want to do. I want to show it uh, a final kind of hero badge or a yep. hero logo and then seeing if how it works in reverse. Because I just had an issue with a, a logo we did and it has a mascot in it with the eyes. I don't know if you've ever been in that situation where you invert it. Now all of a sudden it looks it you know, possessed. And yeah. so you're like, okay, this little figure uh, for a kid's restaurant isn't going to work. Right. So anyways, I, I always like to show that there. And then I'm leaving some space here to mess around with maybe some of those secondary ones. And so what I'm going to try to do now is just start messing around with this idea where I've got the, the master logo and I know this alone could work on its own and be a nice emblem, but I'll duplicate it again. And maybe what I'm going to do is just from what I used here, I'm going to just start making myself one that's not circular, not in the badge and like thinking, how will this start looking now uh, when it comes to other uh, variations that we might want for this logo? Okay. Yeah, so, absolutely. yeah. So that type I think is this, nice. Isn't that cool? That's I like this really one. Nice. It's called uh, Amboy. So I believe this is again, another one from the collection. And Beautiful. I'm going to take that one off there. And one by collection, I... in case you guys don't know, oh, yes. you can go to fonts.adobe.com and there's so many beautiful typefaces that you can use for any yes. of your projects. As long as you have Creative Cloud, it is free. Just download yeah. them. You can also just go up into your your typeface panel and start searching directly from yes. that, which is really Correct. Great. That's great. Good, good call. All right. So I'm just going to start doing this where, let me move these. I love how many Zoom windows you have to have now open, but let's move <laughs> to the other one. So one, uh, so I love this trick too. I, I'm sure you've seen this before where when you have it centered and you have that little extra here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So if you click it, you can see your inserts there, but if you do the option and the left arrow, you can get rid of that extra space. And now when you do center something, it's really centered. So it definitely looks great. All of a sudden you're, you're kind of going there, cool. So this is where I'm like, I, I always have a, a issue with like ratio, like as much as, as many logos as we've all done, I think sometimes too, do you feel the same way when you see a great lockup? Sometimes I'll just save it because I, I just want to 
like understand ratio when it comes to icon text and then supporting right yeah trying to get that like optical yeah balance is sometimes really really tricky you right? know Cause... and sp and spacing right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so we've got walk up pasta bar window so again like now we've got a lot of text here it works great on the um on the uh text here i'm just going to copy that get rid of it and let's see how we can add that in here maybe it has to go to two lines or do we go oh, one line kind of works pretty nicely you know not too bad so i do the old move it up to here i'll probably mess with font like kerning a little bit in a bit but so far i kind of like it also too sometimes I'm, I'm a stickler for justification of like logos and I'm trying to break that because it's like I, it's like a go to. So like sometimes also like doing something a little bit different, make a 180 when you're designing something like to me, I've got other things to use here. I can use either the bullet. Uh, cool thing is I, I took like a tubed pasta as this kind of like filler. You know, when yeah, you're yeah. creating something, I originally was thinking of doing an extra line there, but then I was like, it got too bold. And I still want Veluche to be, and the icon to be the, the thing that sings the most, you know? So, Absolutely. so cool. So we've got this idea here. So that's one more that we've got. I've got a center line in there just so a guide. So a lot of times too, what I'll do is I'll maybe make a secondary one where make this a little bit smaller. We'll get rid of this one. And then I, I love having text on curves because for me, it means I can have something to use again and again, yeah, <laughs> once you've done it. Um, do you do like, uh, do you ever work with the baseline shift on it? Like do you like now on type type uh, options, you can make it center line, you can make it ascending, you know, all that kind of stuff. So yeah, yeah, yeah. there's such good ways to do it. So I'm just gonna flip this around. So it's now, let's see, I gotta get it here. Working with uh, type is. on path sometimes can be so frustrating because I, like, I know what I want it to do. Yeah. But getting it there sometimes is a yes, exactly. <laughs> another challenge. <laughs> so again, I'll just start messing around. It probably has to be a little bit smaller in here. And here's where we can put, we can use. So now we need it. We need one of Alex's puns from yesterday. We need a good, mm. a good fun tagline to maybe add to this one. Cause this is the one that's maybe on the cup or on the bag. Like it, it all it has to do is say the brand, but give you some of the feeling, some of the experience that we talked about. So what should we, uh, what do you, what are you in the mood for? I mean, so Veloce is all about speed, right? So yes. maybe it's something like pronto pasta, like yeah. really quick, you know, maybe something like that. Yeah. Maybe pronto pasta hyphen on the go, Ooh. you know? Mm -hmm. So we can, and a lot of times too, your copy, you're writing it for your space, right? Like if we just had pronto pasta, it might not be enough, you know? Yeah, absolutely. So, so yes. one thing I would say that yeah. it would probably make it stronger. Yeah, go for it. Hey, being that guy is just removing the exclamation mark. Yeah, you're right. Because I it's old a copywriter, it's always like, you know, Yep. if you're using an exclamation mark on your headlines, then your statement's not bold enough on its own. There you go. Ooh. Old advertising agency will love that. From yeah, outside. man. That's really cool. I like that idea. So let's see. Try now. Now it's that balance time, right? Like yeah, it's yeah, everything. Yeah. Looks the like I got balance. Looks like I do have a, maybe a little bit of extra space in there. So let's lock that up a little bit. Ooh, um, Clever came up with a good idea. What's that? Beady Linguini. Oh, that's a great one. Yeah, if you have puns for us, we're, we'll take it. I, I love that idea. That's a great one. So uh, let's see, we'll make it a little bit bigger and I'll spread this out a bit here. Also like maybe not going too far past the, the kind of like the horizon line there, mm -hmm. you know? So kind of dig that in a way. And then the other thing too to think of is you want, sometimes you're gonna want a more horizontal version rather than the vertical. Right. Nice. Yeah, so yeah. like how, again, too, like how you're going to do this is kind of, I've seen some really cool ones where sometimes it's, it's not just the typical lineup where it's here and you've got this off to the side, you know, you got to look at the, the momentum of the logo. Is it moving in some way to, would it work cool as like a little accent, like something yeah. like that, you know, um, well, you also, you, you know, whenever you think about these, right, like responsive branding is now very much a thing, especially with digital. Yeah. Like you have so many great elements already. Yeah. You can almost strip out certain parts of it too and just leverage like 
if you need it to shrink it down just for a certain dimension, you could probably remove just that pasta element and yeah. use the flag with the type because you have such a nice typeface. I love so that idea. Yeah. You have so many great elements already. That's really, really lovely. That's a cool the flag idea. flag above it is also really cool. Like that pasta on there is so nice. I like it's, that idea, dude. Yeah. Let's see. So if I move these up maybe a little bit higher and then I think you've already given me that idea for like just having, like you said, ungroup this and just use that flag. Yeah, I would lock it up with the type because you you know you've got a really nice. Yeah. You can almost do something like do this. It. Yeah. What did you think? I, I kind of oh, let's see. Ooh. So yeah, you see like you know you got all those really nice spaces and that type there is so so beautiful. That's kind of cool. And then like again, this could be we were talking about our little uh, elbow max from yesterday. <laughs> this could make a really great little pattern, you know, yeah. uh, as well. So are we going to so, get to build patterns today? Why not? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm so excited. So let's do this. I'm going to make this move this guy here. We'll take, I think we like this idea for that. Jacqueline goes speedy linguini, fast fettuccine. <laughs> <laughs> we, we might need to build a menu today with chat's help. My gosh, I know we're going to have a little, like maybe even like a little, just like quick, uh, you know, top five to go one. You know, exactly. <laughs> that'd be kind of fun. Yeah, exactly. So let's see. I will. Let's see what we can do. I think man, that flag looks really nice. You did a great job with Thank that. Thank you, man. So I think like sometimes too, if, if we do that step and repeat thing, sometimes that gives you a chance to do something a little bit cool because you know, your spacing's kind of going to work, you know, well, that's interesting. Yeah. That's yeah. kind of one way to do it. Um, I know Pattern Maker. I, 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 have you used that before? Love that tool. Okay, cool. Love it. So, like, I'm wondering too. Like, you can almost. I wonder if there's some way of, if there's if there is an interlock that kind of works, maybe something like that. I'm trying to find the the least complicated one. So if we did this and dragged it here, you know, something like this could be. Yeah, that's um, cool. Grab this guy off here. Man, even just that initial kind of quick pattern that you did just yeah. above is like, I could see that being oh, know, there wallpaper you texture or yeah. something in the restaurant. Like that's yeah. so cool. That looks kind of neat. Oh, I like the intertwined on it as well. It's nice. Right. So when you do, uh, let's try the pattern one. I want to yeah. try that. All right. So walk me through it. Cause I think right. I've only done it once or twice and I'm, I forget how it works. Yeah. Yeah. So go to object make. So it's just like one. Okay. And then object. Yeah. And then go down a pattern and pattern, then make. Pattern, um, there we go. Sweet. Cool. So now what it's going to do is going to, okay, pattern swatch tool, blah, blah, blah. Cool. All right. So now what you can do is you can go to the tile type, like you see. And yeah. And you have it just currently and a grid. So yeah. if you want to just explore what that looks like, you can go to the width and height sections there and just bump those out, like shift up arrow, or you can just designate it yourself if you want. Perfect. And then uh, that, oh, you see go. how that starts spacing it. So the cool thing to do with it is what I like to do is just like start collapsing the artboard, start seeing how that looks, right? But for me, a normal grid like that, kind of boring, right? Like that's yeah. not really that exciting. So okay. go to that tile type up top. Tile type, yeah. There yeah, we go. Click that. And then you can do brick by oh, row, you can do columns, yeah. you can do like that's so great. Those, all these things. So you can do it where it's just a brick and square, or you can do a hexagonal. The hexagonal oh, is personally one of my favorites because you can start to play with things. So the other cool thing about it is that you can leverage this artboard, right? You can move the actual shape you have to the edge. So move it to, like sorry, you've got, you've got the move tiled with art selected. Yeah. So click that off, turn that off so that the artboard stays in place. Uh, move tile with art. Is that in this box? It's, oh, yeah, there it is. Yeah. The, there, there you go. go. Okay. okay. So then I would just scale it down that object you have. The Yeah, just scale that down a little bit and then tuck that into one corner and have it like hanging off the artboard a little bit. Yeah. Not too far off. You want it oh. to still be touching the artboard. So the way that the, no, you want it like closer. There you go. Just a little bit like just up a couple pixels and over. So it, for the way that the, the pattern tool has to operate is it has to be on the the artboard to a certain degree. So then I would oh, okay. duplicate it. Oh, so, you, so you're saying get it right to the edge? Yeah, so you see how it's like not picking up nowadays yeah. again. So I would just duplicate that and then move it in another random spot on that artboard. So the artboard for, for the pattern make is actually that blue 
hexagon at time. Oh, not, I see. Not so this guy. So, so move this in another one? Or, so or... You can't, yeah, there you go. That's their object. So ah, then, I see. And then you can start playing with how they overlap a little bit more. Oh, like, you could, yeah. So this yeah, is so great. And some, maybe even like this idea, right? Exactly. So you can get some really distinct, very funky, very interesting shapes all because you just move things off the bounding board. Yeah, there's bit. like unlimited possibilities. Oh, possibilities. Possibilities. <laughs> that's great. Yeah, this is like, so that's that's one of the greatest things about the pattern tool. Yeah. Versus, you know, the hardest part about the step and repeat is like you do step and repeat and then you're locked into kind of that look and feel. Yeah. And let's face it, your spacing is going to probably be off somewhere if you really get into the pixels. This, you know, you're you're landing it perfect, right? Exactly. If you really want to get precise with it, you just lock it into the middle of the artboard gotcha. and do whatever you want. So yeah. So you just give this a name, flag one, and now it's in your pattern folder. Yeah, and then go. you just use it like a paintbrush, essentially, or sorry, uh, like a, a, a fill. A fill, correct. There you go. Perfect. Bada -bing, bada -bing. Look at that. Love it, man. That's great. And you can build that out to scale too. Like there's like a on the scaling option, you can do it with scale with bounding box or something like that. So nice. either shrink or you can just crop it. Okay. That's great. Love it, man. So I was wondering, you know, what we would do too is we could do maybe one color version of it here if we want to. We haven't explored the colors too much. We did some, we showed yesterday how you could take, uh, photos and turn them into these really great, um, you know, uh, uh, color palettes yep. right from a, uh, anything here and you get it into your library and now you're messing around. So you can definitely get some cool, rich colors that are a little bit more uh, friendly to, you know, I think we have a little, uh, gotta change this guy right here. I'm loving the conversations happening in chat right now. Oh, what's going on? Mallory says she hasn't had pasta in like two years and this isn't helping and well, Jocelyn goes <laughs> please go buy pasta pasta misses you <laughs> i love it i can uh, is is it just a like giving up pasta kind of deal is that what it is i don't know i don't know i'm assuming that's probably what it is oh and mallory goes if i wasn't so hungry for learning on adobe illustrator wow it's turned off gosh. see we're doing good man we're doing good <laughs> it's great great job chat Exactly. Keep the puns coming. Yeah, exactly. So we'll try this one. I think we had a really cool green that was kind of cool too. Mm -hmm. um, I like that these are like fresh takes on the like staple Italian like yeah. flag. Yeah, exactly. Like you don't want to go with the obvious. You want to mm -hmm. go with something a little bit off the the you know the normal trail there. Like why not? You know. Exactly. I kind of dig that idea. So I'm just gonna get these little guys again here, and swap those over to our black. And see, so yeah, so we're getting some some cool things, and then again, too, that what a cool pattern that would make to do the color on the dark or back and forth, you know, and yeah. just mess with some contrast and stuff. Yeah, yeah, kind of like how that's going. So we're getting our little system here. Again, we could probably spend another thirty minutes just refining those, but I think it'd be fun to go and like explore some of the other ones that we did and yeah, start those, those out as well. Okay, so you remember this one we had? I, I was kind of sitting there going like. Oh, it wasn't, it wasn't as, as angry. It wasn't as like, you know, like, uh, liberating as we wanted. And so I was messing around with this one, uh, maybe with or without that, that bar. I'm not sure. I was trying to, I like the idea of it adding stripes and a little, it had like a negative space there, but then I thought, uh, I think this one really works with the V feels really good. All I did was kind of roughened all the edges on this to give it that kind of consistent vibe, maybe even having the star in there. Um, and what was interesting was I thought for sure I wanted something black, like black letter, want to try one of these new and unique fonts. This one's called, uh, Fleisch worst love these names. They're just great, <laughs> but here's, here's something I always hear, especially from a student or something. They're like, I'm like, you couldn't find a better font. They're like, yeah, but you know, there's this one font, but I didn't like the V, you know, mm -hmm. so I didn't use it. And I was like, make it, you know, change it up, do something fun. So like. I was looking at this and I love the way, I think this is gonna work good. It feels like it's in the right family. But again, this V yeah. almost looks like an N, it almost looks like a U. Yeah, it's hard know? to tell, maybe it's an right? A. Yeah, exactly, yeah. A, a D, I mean, it, it's kind of because obviously they're keeping this a very simple, you know, angular chiseled mm -hmm. font. But I figured if we're gonna do something fun, like, so I just basically took the actual font and then I outlined it 
And then what I was doing was here was I was just messing around with this idea of what would the V maybe possibly look like. Yeah. So kind of just, I built it over it. So it's somewhat in line. Right. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. I'm thinking the only thing I thought was maybe different was like maybe bringing this up a little bit. And then do you think that should get a flat bottom or should it stay a point? What do you think? I think that the bottom should stay pointed, but I think okay. the right side of the V should become a square cap. Oh, this one, right? Yeah, because you know, all, if you look at all the other like letters, it looks like there's only one point that's angular and then the rest are square caps. Gotcha, like this. Yeah, so like even looking yeah. at the L, like the L only has one real kind of triangular cap. So I would say maybe it just needs to be a flat cap on the on Let's that see. V. So you're thinking, let's move this guy over here. And we can get, what, it looks like we have a lot of extra ones in here. So let's get rid of those. So let's see, you're thinking square it off or just let it continue? Just like, like, just like it is right now. I would just leave it. Oh, and then like, but higher. Like this, you think? Oops. I don't know if it needs to be higher. Maybe, maybe it does to match the L, but I... But yeah, let's see. So you're thinking even just like that? Yeah, maybe. I don't know. Well, you know what maybe we'll do? Maybe it's weird now because it's like not as tall as the E, but it's not as tall so as let's, the L let's, either. Let's look at it here and get rid of this guy. There we go. Okay. So hmm. I'm thinking maybe just to match the, 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 the L might yeah. help. It is the first letter, right? So Absolutely. I think you're right. Let's try that. And then we'll we'll actually widen it a little bit too. Here and maybe that was too much. There we go. Maybe yeah. just maybe shy of it. You think or what do you think? Just shy of it maybe is a good compromise. I feel like if you're gonna do all matching tops, they need to be the same yeah. height. I'm wondering if the the left side needs to drop down a little bit. Maybe that would make it ah. feel like it creates a nice like rhythm rhythm throughout the type. Like this? Like maybe even a little bit lower. Like, I don't know, but I get like weird about type. I don't, <laughs> I don't know the right person. Oh, I see what you're that. saying. I do, I do like that. I do like that. In fact, it's probably, let's see. You're just shy of that. Those two are pretty, pretty linked. What, so what I'm thinking is there looks yeah. like a, there's like a common height between the E and the C and the E. The O probably obviously has to go above yes. it because of the like. Oh, should we let should weight. we angle it to that? So that's think? what I was thinking is like if you made that that left side kind of the same kind of top point as the E, it'd be a nice carry through visually, and then you've got the V top height going to the L. Yeah. So that feels a little bit more. I like that. I like rhythmic, that a lot. Rhythmic. Okay. There you go. There's some live collaboration for you, everybody. <laughs> There's a lot of just random tinkering around when you're making type <laughs> Exactly. You can All spend right, so, so much time doing this stuff. We can get rid of that and then we can mess That's with That's looking this. really good. Isn't that cool? Yeah, it's sweet. Yeah. Sometimes too, like, again, like we were talking earlier, like the, oh, I didn't get that. There we go. Let's group that for now. Um, try to figure out that, like, so the centerpiece here. Do you ever do this? I always just, I try to draw like what I think is the, actually the, the thing. So I'm going to get a yeah, center so get point. A good center point. <laughs> That's called a, a really bad cheat. <laughs> the only bad cheats there are is the ones that you get caught doing. Okay. Yeah. Or when you do them live on, on Adobe. <laughs> oh, it's perfect. Don't do everything the hard way, guys. You gotta go I fast. I know. I know. So that's looking kind of cool. I think that's right. What do you think about the, should we roughen it to match or or let it stay streamlined. We can I feel like this type is so geometric that if yeah. you roughen it, it's gonna look it kind is. of funky and weird. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but I like how, I just like the blockiness of it. I like the cadence and the letters. Yeah. Maybe there's just like, are you trying to, you're trying was, to pair it right now with the flag, right? I was gonna say, I mean, it's worth a shot. I have a filter in there, I think. Let's see. Uh, okay. From the yeah, last I mean, the one. The pixels are free. Exactly. Hey, look at that. That looks Boom. fantastic. So organic. Yeah. We'll go back to here. Uh, we're on corner. I'm using roughen. Uh, it doesn't look like it's doing too much. Oh, we got to give it a little more per inch. Let's try 25. 
So you're getting a little bit of roughness, maybe just a tad less. I'll do 0.5. Let's see. Mallory asks, what is the significance of the triangles? Uh, which triangles? I think in These the guys? letters themselves. I think it's just the typeface. Oh, right? it's just the typeface. I mean, I, I definitely wanted something black letter inspired by this one. Um, I think it's just the fonts have personalities rather than like looking at one particular area and saying, what is the, tr the, what are the triangles mean? To me, it just means it was handmade. It was chiseled out. It was probably cut from something. And I think that is more important than like, does the triangle represent three points or something like that? Well, also, I think whenever you, you know? look at all the work that you're doing, you're talking about trying to be different, unique and kind of be like challenge the status quo. So like, We've already done kind of like a very status quo -y type of design with like yes. the noodle like flag from earlier and stuff like that. So like instead of leaning heavily into what spaghetti kind of means and looks like to people, exactly contrasting it with something that is completely not what you would expect to see from uh, a pasta restaurant is sometimes a really good way of standing out in the marketplace. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Like, and then the other thing too, like, do you ever use? I have a rule that like if I use something for a font and it's the logo, like Veluche here in this actual one. Do you use that typeface again, or do you typically like to let it be primarily only in the logo? Yeah, we talked about it briefly yesterday. For me, mm -hmm. it really depends on use cases. I think there's there's very much a thing called asset fatigue. Yes. And that means that whether it's a color or whatever you're doing, you can get people really tired of your brand very quickly. Yeah. So by by taking a typeface that is in your logo and then applying that to every headline and copy block and things like that, that gets yeah. really old very, very fast. Yeah. So uh, I typically like to have as a secondary typeface that plays with that original typeface yep. without being super on the nose. Like yeah. There's like yeah. little things like you have this typeface here that feels blocky at times, but it also feels a little bit more organic and friendly. So it can pair really well as like a subhead. Good. I, I, I kind of agree. This one's called, this one's called Adso Medium. I believe it's from Typekit as well. And what I liked about it was it, it felt like a supplemental or a secondary to go with something very black letter, but yep. still have the characteristics of, of what you're trying to do. You yeah. know, um, the other thing I was thinking of, maybe that star isn't the right thing. And I was thinking we had something here. We've used like, I had some of these little sketches that I did in, uh, um, what do you call it? In Adobe Draw on the iPad, messed around with it. I don't know if that maybe could be a better thing to go in the flag, just to represent the noodle and the pasta. Could try yeah, that. Could. And it has a good triangular shape to it a little bit. So I'm going to keep him here because these might be really cool little assets for down here. And let's see what this kind of does. Oops. Let's get this going here. There we are. Not sure if it's helping, hurting. Kind of think it's too soft. We'll save that for another one. <laughs> I don't think it was like necessarily bad. I think that like the the smallest loop gets lost a little bit, right? Yeah. And so whenever you think about these logos, you're like, how does these scale? And the then scalability. That, that small little logo, that right. loop, yeah. sorry, that loop mm -hmm. might get a little tight, but yeah. if you cut one of those loops off, then maybe it, yeah. maybe it works. Yeah, it could work. I think I'm gonna, for now, I'm, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna keep this guy because I think it's a little revolutionary. It I sticks like with it. that. Yeah. Here it doesn't work. I think we got a lot of, a lot oh, you of, don't you don't like it below. Oh, I, I didn't. I don't know. What do you think? You you kind of dug it. Maybe I it's. I kind of like it below, like because I can see it with it. the flag and it works, and I think it's okay it without the flag having those stars there is cool. Like it's a, and it plays really well with the like the triangles and the typeface above. There you go. I think it just needed the the skew here. Um, let's make sure I got everything in the. For some reason, I was using like an off black here. Uh, there we go. Okay. So there we go. Starting to have something cool there. There we are. And I know this is like, let's see, this has got to be the wrong color. Everything else is this. For some reason, I started using this kind of lighter black. I, I don't know. It's like I never use 100% black and I never use 100% white. <laughs> Love having a little bit of a, a, a variance in there somehow, you know? 
So Absolutely. we got something cool going on there. And then let's get rid of that. Now, of course, we could do some supplemental ones. So we know we just can have our we can have our logo as is as is. Yeah, that's cool. Right. That's cool, Mark. Thanks, man. Then we can do sometimes too, like even just splitting those up alone is all you really need to do. You could do something cool like that. I'd say we have I'm trying to think if we could do something like that. Maybe it's just the flag with Veluche or the one star kind of like something like that. This could be a neat secondary version too. Maybe it's a little big. I always think of it as like, if it, if you had an accent or maybe it'd be, Ooh, it's going to fit right over the O that's kind of cool. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm gonna hit save. <laughs> <laughs> Good idea. Good idea. <laughs> Good idea. All right. Let's see what else could we do. We could do, we could do a, a full kind of badge lockup. I think what would look kind of cool is if we did more like, instead of a circular thing, we could do more like the, the, the uh, rounded uh, rectangle kind of okay. thing going all the way around and it can have, we can put something really cool in there. So let's try this a little bit smaller and we'll zoom in and see what we can do here. So cool. I hope I'm not going too fast or too slow. <laughs> uh, if you need us to repeat anything of what we're doing, please let us know. We can absolutely mess with things. So I'm going to like line it up to maybe that. Let's see. We'll get a thing here. I'm curious. I think I had some students that were going to be joining us. Is anybody in chat that I would know? Curious. We'll find out momentarily. Yeah. Awesome. But man, this is looking really good. Cool. So if you guys are just turning in now, we are working on a walk up pasta bar. Yeah. That is going to contrast and lead the way into the new era of a COVID friendly <laughs> diet with your mom's favorite spaghetti sauce it's all about comfort baby exactly all right, oh good so now we we're just in time for that we need a longer uh uh tagline here i'm just going to go back up to my notes and see was there anything that we had that we kind of liked here we could use the um uh, windows of possibility you know or windows of possibility Want to put that in there? When, Windows of Possibility, I think, is a good one. Let's try that. Let's leverage that. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Let's give this a shot. Hello, Jose. Welcome. Welcome to the stream. Windows of Possibility. Yes, like if you have any puns throughout the day, please give it to us. <laughs> they might make their way into the collateral. They, they just might make it to the new norm here. Yep. There we go. Cool. So let's see, we can center that first. Perfect. You know, it's funny sometimes. Yeah, I know that's a misspelling. <laughs> <laughs> that's why so, whenever I'm working in this space is I just turn off the, the spell correct. Uh, exactly. I got to start doing that too, man. Oh there my go. gosh. Voodoo Val says, palms are sweaty, mom's spaghetti. <laughs> We're going to do a oh, collaboration with Eminem. Th th there you go. These, ne these weak arms are heavy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> cool this is getting there i think let's get this maybe a little bit down more here and then this can go that looks about yep that's about centered there so it's getting something oh uh, then there's always that how do you fill do you just put lines do you do oh did i mess something up here let's see what did i do wrong hmm copy for some reason i didn't lock my logo and whoops and i shifted it a little bit there we go all right <laughs> is trying to get us copyright striked for us singing eminem <laughs> uh oh <laughs> like, sing it sing it oh that's right i forget about that <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll do the whole the whole song oh i'm ready Let's I, do some I, karaoke I'll, chat yep <laughs> I'll get my mic and we'll, we'll, we'll rock that out, dude. Perfect. <laughs> All right. So then we got this one. I wonder too, like, then you can put in what's neat too, is sometimes you can do, I mean, as just like, you could do the whole established thing or something cool where you're writing it now this way Yeah. and helping kind of like. Established today. 
Yeah, yes, exactly. Uh, or where do we, maybe we want to, do we want to pick a location? Do we want to, what, what city do we want this to be in? We haven't even discussed that. Uh, something that will abbreviate very evenly. <laughs> same, same letters, right? Like I mean, um, New York City, you could do NYC real quick, you know, yeah. establish NYC, boom, bow. Ah, there you go. I like that. So uh, that works great. Always love that. Boom. Sweet. And I mean, a lot of your inspiration had that nice, really. You, I mean, you've got that brick wall behind you, like all that good stuff. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. Brooklyn, exactly, New York man. vibes already. Mm hmm. Kind of dig that. Feeling good. Cool. So that's getting somewhere. Um, what do you think about weight and everything? Like, I'm trying, sometimes these being the exact same weight and size, I'm wondering if there's a better solution to. Yeah, it feels like they need to be scaled down a little bit. These guys that, yeah, that, that, so these guys small, maybe even weight a little bit less so I can take it down to mm. maybe a little too uh, thin, too thin. There's that. That's a little less, maybe not as letter spaced. You can always, um, anytime you do an established thing, you got to do a line above and below it. <laughs> It's the go-to. Isn't that, isn't that the rule nowadays? Come it is on. the rule. Of course. There you go. I'm surprised that Illustrator hasn't built that feature automatically. Yet. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe just centering it within the that looks a little bit better. Got that going. That's not bad. Um, let's get that a little bit within there. What else? Let's see. Okay. Not bad. I'm doing the squint test. Did you did you catch that? <laughs> oh, the squint test is my favorite thing. So chat, if you don't know about the squint test, yeah, you can check your hierarchy of type and everything by squinting to see if anything's not readable mm -hmm. or which elements are the most readable. So it's always helpful. You can always bring it into Photoshop if you really, really have to or want to. Yeah. Uh, and then apply like a Gaussian blur or something. Yeah. Like or that. do the or do the you know full yeah. back here. Yeah. Um, run to the corner of your out. room, look at your screen. Like yeah. what you can do to yeah. make things look weird and small. Uh, that was what was missing. I got to do it in this font. I think that's much, I think it was too competing uh, to have it in the same font as the, the curve text. Yep. I agree. So we're going to do it all up better that way. There we go. And also that condensed type is also it helping it kind of stay a little <sighs> bit more tight. Look at that. Oh, that NYC is kind of, that's nice. <laughs> Clever that's really says something. Noki on heaven's door. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> so you can, thoughts? so now, now what we got to do is make a rock and roll like pasta place and think of the, the amazing things that will be on the menu for sure. I'm excited. That's great, dude. I love it. Okay. So we've got that. I think we could, you know, what'd be kind of fun too, is maybe we do a little pa uh, pattern with this guy. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. I'm let's picking up see. what you're putting down. Yep. Do I, let's see, I'm going to try, let's, let's try this. So we do object, uh, pattern. Yep. Make great. Okay. Go for it. And then let's try something. Ooh, I kind of, I love how that lines up. Mm -hmm, let's mm -hmm. see. See how much easier that is. It's oh yeah. That's Ooh, looking good. that's the one. That is the one. And the great thing is you can just do these and you can duplicate them and then you can edit them really quick. It's really, yeah. really simple to do it. Yeah. Let's do a one, one. There we go. Okay, cool. And then we'll call this one the, fl the flag one. I think you already have a flag one. We got to do flag two now. Is that what I called it? I think you called it the last one flag one. Yeah, you're right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm here for. Thanks. You're my co-pilot, man. This <laughs> exactly. is awesome. Okay, there we go. So now... We can keep this other one back here and let's try out a flag pattern and see how that looks. Perfect, dude. Yeah, yeah. Sounds sweet. Cool. So we wanna maybe what we'll do is let's let's get a let's get a color option going here. Let's see how that looks. So we could try I'm gonna go right to that brick first and just see. Whoa. Oh, look yeah. at that. That's looking cool. Let's see. We had um, that might be too. Ooh, it's it's quite vivid, but this one definitely has that like 
That's the that's the style. It's got that that's, brick. That's the sauce. That's yeah. the sauce right there, man. That is that is legit. We lost the star. Uh oh. Yep. <laughs> Just get that in there. He's in there. There we go. The star might actually look good with like as a white star. You know, Ooh, like that or like, or an off white contrast. Off white. There we go. Off white. There we are. That's like, nice, dude. We got to open a studio, dude. Let's do it. <laughs> I'm ready. I'm hungry look, though. We also look, need to have a kitchen. Look out, world. I know. Yeah, exactly. I know, dude. So we have to find something somewhere in between LA and Portland so we yeah. can commute easy. <laughs> I don't want to go to best, back to San Francisco though. <laughs> there you go. Too expensive. Now you don't have to anymore, man. You can go wherever you want. That's true, but well, you know, in between, that's like pretty much almost smack dab. Yep, that's right. Let's see. <laughs> Let me see if it something. Uh, no, you're right. I think it was should be in that kind of oatmeal kind of color. Maybe it's a little too. There we go. I like it. Ooh, baby. Yeah, man. That's good. got some good vibes. You digging that? Okay. Cool. So the other one I was messing around with was this this version of like I wanted one that's like I took pieces for yourself. Let's say I know we've been talking a lot. Absolutely. Always do something that's a, there's really really no reason you if you're a branding person I think for sure you should be able to do any any vibe any style you know yeah, I kind of like that you know so with this one let's see I'm gonna go with um, let me go back to that color thing and we'll see if that works so I think it was Adobe color i um, use that extract theme so what i'm gonna do on um, and we won't be singing any billy joel although i really <laughs> want to right now <laughs> and what you do is you're gonna find that photo that has the essence it has perfect, perfect theme so extract. good yes exactly so let's see where would i put uh oh i already guess i Got to do another window here. Give me a second. So we want to go to Adobe uh, Color. Okay. I'll bring this one back. So here we go. And leave so. Let's double check if that's it. Get this pizza going. All the and I can move it around because like we're not <laughs> we're not catching the green just yet. So I think I can move to that. And I've got this great color palette that's here. Now I'm. I've got some choices. I can go with the darker color tones, the deeper tones, the muted, this one here as well, and the colorful. And I think since the one I'm working on right now, I want to do, let's get, because I don't, I don't think this is going to look that good on black background, but I want to do some, yeah. some brights. So let's go with the bright here. Um, let's get a green instead of that second red. Let's see. There we go. That looks kind of cool. So we got some good variation in there. So it's in my library here. I will call this one uh, pizza. So I remember that it's from the pizza. You're going to save it and it'll get into your library. So we'll bring that back. And then there it is. Pizza. Pizza. Perfect. So I was thinking like this would be kind of a cool one to actually just do something unique where you got some different signature colors throughout here. And we've got that color. And then you can just repeat it as well. Get that green in there again, because it looks so good. Perfect. So like you've got this neat thing and then this could be your pasta color, something maybe a little bit more yellowish I'm gonna go with like. So how'd you build this typeface? That I did by hand. I just did that in uh, um, Adobe Draw. So oh, I nice. just drew it out. Um, what I'm, what I, what I usually do is I extend those pieces. So there, I just get the shape of it. And then with the eraser tool, I really get in there and cr make those, those corners nice and crisp, you know? Mm. So that gives you, it's just like you would, if you were, you know, cutting it off with an exacto blade or whatever, if this yeah. was a real piece of paper. So that's kind of what I did with that. And I just wanted to see if there's something cool we can do here, you know, for fun. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, you can probably even like, Maybe even give it a little bit of a, this might work or might not. Eh, if if one has drop shadow, they should all have drop shadow. Yeah, so, that's right? the trouble you run into, right? Don't you hate that? I <laughs> no. <laughs> and then again, too, all I did was like, when I brought this over, I was kind of thinking, well, let's just build it around it. So I ungrouped it, moved things around, spaced it out a little bit, 
you know, lopsided and kind of different. So maybe this one can be a little bit turned. Uh, let's see. There we go. Right about there. I love when you can get a little bit uh, funky with your typefaces like exactly, this. Exactly, dude. Especially because, like, you know, all these corporate identities that everybody's been doing lately have been just become sans serif geometric typefaces. Mm -hmm. And so it's nice to bring in some of this contrast to the. To yeah. The I totally agree, man. I totally agree. I think too, I remember seeing uh, last year at Adobe Max, they were saying that something coming to Illustrator soon is global lighting. Have you seen that, that like that sneak? So you're going to be able to vector, uh, even vector art, you're going to be able to light it with okay. shading and highlights. So again, like it still stays vector, which is kind of a plus, you know, which is cool. Yeah, so I kind of like that. And then, so for this one, maybe what we're going to do is I'm going to go back to our tried and trusty thing here. We can use this one for now. I'm almost thinking we can put something underneath it and kind of create almost the smile underneath okay. some type. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? So let's see what we can do. So we have Quanto. This would be, so this is our super fast. So this is our, I'll just do pasta uh, window bar. Okay. And I think we're going to need maybe, so what do you think? You've got a lot of personality in the font. Do you, do you, do you balance it with something like this or maybe find something that has a little bit of some rust to it? Like a little oh, bit, of, a little bit of grit. The hard part is that I've done something kind of similar to this with like the Sorbo tequila bottles that I did on Adobe live a while back. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. And so for me, my gut reaction is, do that typeface in black because that's what I did, and then leverage yep. all the collateral to be super vibrant and crazy. But <laughs> I'm so biased in how I did things for my own project that it's yeah. it's clouding my judgment. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't have a good answer for you. I think because I, I think the type is so strong, right? Yeah, I almost yeah. feel like I'm getting distracted by the colors, but that's again me just being 100% biased and sure. You know, yeah. So, so I think like a lot of times too is um just making that switch. If you notice from black to like a, a, a warm gray or something or something tonal to match with what's going on there. Yeah. Um, what I would that, say almost go ahead is I would probably leverage a color within the Ooh. colors that you've already selected. So maybe the green. Yeah. Cause then I think, and so I think now That's when I'm great. looking at it, the green becomes kind of a smiley face. Like mm -hmm. you've got the U and the O is the two eyes. And then the, the copy below it is that like happy, like, I there you go. Pasta, and then you got like the negative space could be somebody shoving pasta in their mouth. I don't know. We're yeah. getting really abstract with our, <laughs> our metaphors here. That's a great idea. I like that. Um, one thing I've I've been using a lot of is the uh, like the universal color edit, mm, uh, yeah, that's great which is one. so so great. So in uh, is it edit color? Right. Yeah. So edit color. You go to this recolor artwork. And what it does is it finds all the, the colors you're obviously using. And if you hit edit, um, first thing I do is I usually lock. So you're linking the harmonies here. And then as you turn these things, you'll notice that you can try all these different color. Con like, look at that. Like, wouldn't have thought of these colors, but it's kind of nice. You know, you can keep, that's kind of cool too. That green is really, we can always change that back to our yellow if we need to. That looks a, a little haunting Halloween-ish there. It's the spooky season. Uh, exactly. It's October. So when you go to fall, yeah. Well, that's kind of, I like that. That is nice. Yeah, I like the like kind of That's a like nice one. Peachy pink. Yeah. And then you can even just, with just the slide bar here, you can kind of go, well, I want it a little bit deeper. Let's work, you know, or going a little bit lighter. And let's say if it has to go on more, keep more on the pastels. So yeah. you find that, that medium where you like, hit okay. Now you've got, what's great too, is this is a quick way to give yourself two or three options that are slightly different. Yeah. Um, and you can really show off to the client and go like, yeah, we, we, we get you, you know? So again, there you go. That's kind of a neat way to do it. Which, and this is the trouble you start running into is like, yeah. which colors do you like the most? Uh, yeah. <laughs> now, obviously, yeah, you're right. Like you're showing, you're showing it to the, to the, to the uh, client. So I, I like to, I'm getting better and better at streamlining what I show Yeah. at the most two options because anything more than that. And I find that they're going to, uh, their personal preference will start coming in, you know? Absolutely. So, Stephanie asked, when did yeah. Adobe add that? And I would say, uh, oh, you guys are talking about the touch type tool. 
Have you used the type touch type tool? No, which um, I've never used it. Let's see. I think that was just recent, right? I think so. Yeah. Um, what was that? Um, might have to look that up. I'm also yeah, thinking too, you could have a little fun with this one being a little bit more like, do you try a version where you've got almost like a stamp kind of going on it? Oh yeah, you could do that. Um, whoops, I just changed the name of our place there. Let's get this a little, <laughs> there's that option. Drag him over a little bit. So even if let's say we go only with the green on this one or the lighter green here, this one we can go with our darker red. This can go here. Might not work so much over it, but I would say since we're a little bit shifting all over the place, mm -hmm. I'll ungroup this and just mess around with these guys a little bit and give, the, give it a little bit like it's Ooh. been hand pressed a little, mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. like, so it's like an up, down, up, down, and then I'll go in and like just ever so slightly tilt them a little bit. So it's yeah, it feels like a wood block print or there you go manually. Oh, I love that stuff. Yeah. There you go. These are those little stupid nuances, but they actually do. <laughs> it actually is gonna it's gonna turn what you look like and go, oh, I know that font. It's uh it's Nexo Rust. We've all used it before. <laughs> but if you if you mess with it a little bit. Like to me, I think it, it gives it that feel, like you said, like it was actually taken from, you know, some sample. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Do you use like capture a lot on on Adobe, like Adobe? I capture. do not. Yeah. I, oh, dude. I know. It's I, so maybe, great. maybe if I was to do more sketching, I would use it more. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <I would've thought. laughs> it's really good to use for those things where you are, you want a a, a bit of a signature on something where like if you see a font somewhere on a old billboard or even on you know like a vintage thing print uh painted on brick yeah you yeah. can snap that and actually use and re reword it to the word you need and it'll show up in your library like it's little That's things like wild. that That's like so cool. it's just such a great tool you know? <laughs> when i leave my apartment next time i'll have to use there you it. go <laughs> 2021 alex yes. is coming out of the cave there you go all right so there we got we got like we got a few different fun ones here to go with, you know. Which one are you? Which one are you leaning towards right now? Gosh, I don't know. As far as I think, as far as orientation, I like maybe this. This one's to me reads easier, I think. But I would say, why don't we try these colors in Quanto? Yeah. Let's see that. So I'm gonna go quickly here and just do. And this, I think, is a great example of like, if you, as a creative or as the designer, are working on this project for a client. If you don't feel super strongly around each one and you're kind of like, I like all these examples, Free you want to give some more creative <laughs> control to the client, which is mm -hmm. a great way to get buy-in. If you, you know, you, these are great. I like all of them. You choose these, you can't go wrong. You know, yeah, it's a great opportunity to get your client to have that creative control so that you can fight a different battle later on or, right. you know, you exactly, might be dude. pushing a pattern that they don't necessarily like, but because they've already gotten a victory by like, picking the logo or whatever. Yeah. They might, you know, understand where you're coming from a little bit. Yeah, more. yeah. You know, I, I'm, I'm, I, I always know too, if, if I have ever shown something that I wasn't 100% uh, sold on, that was the one they picked. And you, a thousand percent. And you just got, how do you eliminate that? Only show them what you will bet, put all your money on, you know? Yeah. Absolutely. And, it, and it, it makes for and it makes for a much easier, uh, smooth road ahead, right? <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, just like you said at the beginning, like all that strategy work, everything you did up front with positioning and understanding your audience and some voice and tone things, that all helps yeah. get everybody well aligned before you present. Oh, totally right. And stuff. Yeah. So I'm thinking we can even do something kind of fun like this where. Ooh. Okay. He's like, like, yep, I'm done. I'm in. I'm in. Sold it. <laughs> I already know where you're going with it, and I don't like it. <laughs> so it, it kind of can work that way. There's so, God, man, there's now there's about 100 different ways you could do it. You could multiply them and give it that, this kind of vibe, which may not, not, not read as 
as good. Or you can do the whole like where you sometimes what I'll do is I'll drop shadow something like this. And I want that to basically be white. Mm -hmm. And then this will go to the back, right? And then yellow to the front. Something like that. But it's God still this is the one working, huh? Mm -hmm. It's cool. Or you can do a drop shadow or the a darker orange, a darker orange kind of vibe. Yeah. So what I what I usually do is okay. I mean, this I, is where you can start. You oh really God! This spiral. Anything? Like, yeah, any, yeah, get it? Spiral. <laughs> oh man, that was so good. I so missed what, that. I know. Come on, man. So all I want is I want the white on top of the orange in a darker orange, right? Yep. So I'm can I could delete this. I'm gonna grab these two because I know that white is my offset. That's what's offset here. So if I, I think I got to expand that because that's still got a rough in on it. So let's uh, expand that. Cool. So this and that, if I do intersect, like we, and then get rid of all the orange. Let's see if, yikes, I did this wrong. Let's do this again. Okay. So Only I need that. happy little accidents, as Bob Ross would say. Yes. So we want a, yeah. <laughs> so I take this and minus back. Will that do it? Yeah. There we go. Nope. I want it the other way around. Uh, this is the back. So we'll minus This chat is what we're talking about with West, messing with the Pathfinder tool. Yes. You can keep pounding that those buttons and try to see. And you're like, hey, one, you one of them is going to work for me. Uh, exactly. How about if we, oh, I know we'll do hit that. Let's just look at them as lines first. And um, where is my, did I, where's my stroke, 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 there we go. Okay, bear with us. So that all I need is that stuff in there. So I'm gonna do the divide, ungroup it all. So now I can break away all of these pieces that I don't need, including that, including that, right? So there's my, yeah, that's what I want. Okay, back to here. We don't need him or do we? Let's see. No. Okay. Whew. So now make that this orange and let's see. Ariana goes, yep, that's all I do. Click everything until I find the right <laughs> one. Yeah. yeah. Right there with you. Okay. There we are. So now bring this back over right about there and bring the yellow to the front. That's what I was trying to do. Ah, he did it. <laughs> so Can Taylor we... <laughs> goes, would uh, would you present all three to a client or just one? And I think that's a great question. Let's say I, I would typically wouldn't go this far with two names. I, I'm I'm just doing that for the fun of it for our our little show. I would I wouldn't even probably go that far into the discovery of stuff unless we are nailed down on that final word. So let's say we went with Quanto. I'm. I do so much upfront now that like two blown out options is about all I'm going to show, but you wouldn't just show, Hey, here's option a, and here's option B, uh, choose. You're going to do the secondary logos. Like we're doing, I would always include maybe two or three applications of it. So do a quick mock-up of it on a sign, on a bag, on a to-go cup, always make sure the applications are like applicable to the brand. Uh, that you're working on. <laughs> like if I, you're doing a spaghetti brand, don't show them a burger mock-up. There you go. Exactly. Right? Burgers, you know? <laughs> oh, at least you're in the right industry, but I, I've seen sometimes where it's like, it's, it's, it's very funny to see what people will put their things on. Right. So well, I check out this protein bar for your spaghetti business. Yeah, exa like, <laughs> exactly. Don't think exactly. that's the right business. Yep. Yep. So again, I think I'm, I'm kind of happy with this. This one here is kind of fun. I think Gosh, you could have two, you might have multiple versions. Sometimes it's great to give them, you could do a one color like this one, where if you give it enough white offset around that, it basically just gives you the barrier to actually make this a one color. Like thinking ahead, sometimes if that's the monogram for this entire brand, they might go to embroidery. They might go yeah. to a one color t-shirt and you want to give them something that is going to work. So for that one, you know, I would just simply just take it offset the path a little bit. That's way too big, 0.025, there we go, make it white, there you go. So we have something like that where no colors are touching, that could obviously, 
you can it could be grayscale it could be one color you name it but i think oh. this one's kind of has a little bit of fun you know this could be a great insignia uh that just it gets used to represent the brand 100 percent. you know yeah i like the drop shadow on that one a lot mm -hmm. more than the uh the one on the left with the stroke yeah it just it just seems yeah. to, to have more interest and feel a little bit yep. more fine-tuned so sometimes you can give them you can give them a little a little choice it depends on the application can also compare like if it's being printed or if it's digital if it's extra inks you know obviously give them a stripped down version but if it's Correct. all digital <laughs> go yeah. for it man you know and, and like i said earlier i think most people want to be involved in the creative process even mm -hmm. if they aren't creative so giving people the opportunity to be involved and provide feedback and selection is super super helpful yeah, I mean, I, yeah i've worked at design firms where they're like nope you only get this thing and we're the heart surgeon and we do everything for you yeah and you have no say because we know everything but it doesn't work for every client i know dude don't you also feel too it's, it's also like what's in your nature i think if you are if that's not you like um especially if you're running your own business or if it's just you and the client I think you just got to be as honest as you can. And like when you hold their hand through this process, I think one, you've built them now into your process. So when you get to get work with them again, they've yeah. already gone through it and they will refer you probably 10 times more because yeah. of the way you've taken them through the process. Right. Absolutely. I mean, yeah. I, I have those, those client meetings where, you know, they, like the logo that's easy okay great yeah i've had those where they don't like it and then i spend the next like 45 minutes with them with my illustrator open because oh. i'm not afraid to show them the, yeah. the dirt you know like you you guys want this change okay here's real time this is why wow. it doesn't work you know like instead of me being like it won't work you know that's yeah that's a terrible way of me going about doing my business so for me, which I'm not recommending for everybody. I'm just no. confident in my ability <laughs> that I've already explored these things. Mm -hmm. So I can show them if I already have it in an artboard or if whatever, I can show them real time. This is why it doesn't work. And then they can see it and be like, oh, you know what? You're actually right. Like, let's just go back to your original idea. Yeah. So. And you know that you, you weigh the options there. You know, maybe taking them through that is going to prove your point. Um, Correct. Much easier than any back and forth email for two days right so like yeah. yeah the only time i will cave in on that is if i know the results will 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 be greater for that yeah. two minutes of letting them see behind the the behind the scenes yeah, um, yeah. But, but, <laughs> unlike but what we do on that. adobe live where yeah. we have <laughs> chat and everybody can kind of hang out and be very real-time collaborative with us exactly um, gotta have a little separation of <laughs> space a little bit sometimes that's a great one that's a great one so we, we had this one going. This was one that we were working on, I think at the very end, I let you kind of, you, you dug the vibe going there. When I was starting to reimagine it or, or mm -hmm. now take it to the next step, my fear was that we were looking too much like uh, a music note. Oh, that's a good point. You I see what I mean? And, and, yeah. and I think sometimes it's great to show those things to, to others and stuff. So what all I did was I just flipped it around. And I thought, okay, we don't have that anymore. It really works as the flag. Mm -hmm. um, it could also work kind of in the way of the, the, this could represent the noodle and the pasta and something kind of fun, like in that zone. So I was like, and I was thinking, gosh, this really does just work in a nice way already, you know? Yeah. Kind of has a good vibe to it. Um, we can narrow this down to maybe two colors or something like that. Or let's make this more like, um, let's get that. I should have. One thing I should have done is probably had a few good pasta colors ready to go. <laughs> there, that's kind of that, that's got that pasta dough feel, right? Yeah, absolutely. And Denny asked, "What what was that typography you used?" And you actually built that yourself, which is what, awesome. So you guys can also do that at home. Oh, for the Velu this Veluche? Exactly. Yep. Or I'm sorry, the Quanto. Yeah. The Quanto. Yeah. I mean, you know, right. to be honest with you, I, I saw some inspiration earlier in the day on Instagram, someone that uh, I think someone was posting a best of or something. And it was this old album cover from like, uh, some like jazz retro thing. And God, I just, I I'll save those immediately when I see anything that's like fresh and new. And yeah. so when I was drawing it, that's what came to mind. I was like, it's playful. It's fun. It can be rebellious in the way it's applied, you know, like we were saying, if you want to do the spray paint kind of effect, yeah. you know, that could be kind of fun, you know, Absolutely. so there's all different kinds, you know, this and one might be, 
Just a reminder to everybody in chat, we do have design feedback coming in for your daily creative challenge in Illustrator. So if you haven't had a chance to work on it yet, hurry up. You only got 15 more minutes. And nice. We'll be reviewing those shortly. Cool. All right. This was our other one. This was <laughs> this was that one that was like the flying pasta elbows. Yeah, the, the, the rainbow <laughs> clouds of, of spaghetti. <laughs> Love that one. Let's get this guy. I just need that color. Um, Cool. So let's let's mess around with it a little bit. I was this could be probably by far our most friendly one that we're dealing with here. And I'll make this. Let's try to get this in that. There you go. And then what do you think for these guys? Um, we could go the red route, but I think it kind of let's go with like that's kind of cool. Yeah. OK, I like it. So the great thing about this yeah. is like you can always flip it on the side later on and make a little smiley face out of it for some <laughs> exactly. coll collateral you need. Exactly, dude. I love that. legs. Yeah. So we've got this. I'm trying to think too. So now let's call this one. We need another. We'll do this one as Quanto because it is fast and we are we are showing off the speed with this one. So I'm going to try an upper and lower case because we haven't done one in that zone. And it probably came in way too small there. So let's try this again. Okay. There we go. And I'm going to go to, for now, I know I have a Gotham rounded that might be cool to try. I love it. There we go. Because <laughs> it's got, I mean, it's literally, is there, a, it's almost shouting out to you something like this. Yeah. You know? There's. Uh, have you ever seen the meme? It was like 99% of the time being a designer is choosing a typeface. Yes. And the 1% is just going back to <laughs> Gotham. Gotham. <laughs> oh, I love that, dude. It's true. It's it's completely true, you know? I'm sorry. It was like 99% of the time is trying to convince yourself not to use Gotham. <laughs> <laughs> and then the other 5% the other using Gotham. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, cool. So we're, we got, I'm just going to like build some quick ones. How are we doing on time? We got like 15 minutes. Yeah, we got 15 minutes. We got a little super pronto Oof. pronto. Yes, exactly. So I know I can obviously do one like this. I have a little fun with it this way. Mm -hmm. um, Get a little copy pasta. Yeah. Going. I mean, I'm not usually a, a fan of these kind of things, but you, you can, if you really want to finesse something and get in there mm -hmm. just slanting a font isn't enough you got to go and do something different but sometimes too um be careful with things that get heavily slanted or angular i always find they love it i love it but then once you're building it for applications you're like why didn't i just make a nice straightforward <laughs> logo this is killing me everything's got to be at this perfect angle every time um it does limit your you know your your thing there but yeah and collateral yeah it's exactly tough. you know so I mean, this is something cool. This could obviously make a fun pattern in so many ways where maybe we can even do it without. Yeah, without the spaghettes. Yeah. So I'm curious to see sauce. what this is going to be. Would you just do one or would you do three? Like when you're. I'd probably like, do all three. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So I'm going to expand it first. So we've got them as fills. There we go. And uh, what do we got? Clever is just like making. <laughs> Tons of puns and names in chat still. <laughs> Tortellini the hair. <laughs> Clever's also got the co colander hat waiting flying spaghetti monster. So, Very cool. <laughs> it's been a busy chat day. I like it. I know. I know. This is great. Let's see. Maybe if we go back to this one. So like, yeah, you, if you just now. mess with those like widths and heights, yeah, you can get them kind of finessed how you want them. Oh, yeah. There you go. And then let's see if that's too far apart. Ooh, that kind of, even just that simplicity and then mm -hmm. maybe bring it, tighten it up a little bit, 1.5. Yeah. That's cool. That's kind of neat. Um, call that one elbow. Yeah, it's pretty crazy when you look into like all the patterns and all the things you can do with just multiple elements within the pattern tool. It, I've done full illustrated scenes in it where yeah. they connect from edge to edge. It it can get really wild. That's pretty cool. All right, I'm gonna go. Let's let's follow up with this guy. I think this was our last one. We want to try something here. Um, let's see. 
we want to maybe change this. Did we have a cool green? Yeah, we had that. Uh, we could take these guys, get it to a different red. It's kind of cool. Was that the final one? Let's see. I know we had a bunch here that we did. Oh, so we had this one that was cut and we we're probably going to, we're going to drop the squigglies. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. All right. So now we've got our one where we're back to an angle. We're getting it like, so for the font itself, should we do, should we keep everything else pretty straightforward or do we, do we give it this entire thing something totally different, right? Do we, do we skew this up? Yeah. You know, like something like Ooh, that. That's kind of nice. You know, it, it, it. Like, this is the one we like because it really played off that old Italian, like yeah. racer kind of vibe thing. So let's see how this starts to look. Yeah, I could see this as like a food truck option where you change out the grill, like the grill ornament and it has just that V, like that could be so cool. This is the Vespa delivery, I there think is what it go. is. Oh, right? yes, absolutely. I love that. So let's see if we go, probably keeping it red. Taylor then, asks, can you make, can you use the make pattern with more than one symbol? Yes, you can put multiple oh, different symbols in there. That's great. A bunch of different really cool things with it. So yeah, absolutely. Go in there, tinker with it. And then if you like what you have, save it as one and then you can duplicate it and then start editing and building a bunch more. So that's great. Definitely that's great. So this man, I'm glad this happened. This was like a little happy accident, but I, I like these brand extensions that you can mess yeah. with. Like there's no reason you like, you can't have an extension of your brand that plays with everything else, but it's this like, especially with delivery. I had a few clients that that was their bread and butter for the last few months where they can yeah. only go to delivery. So we did a whole new logo that was, you know, to go and delivery for them. And that became what they used on social media and everything. It was almost like a um, temporary brand mm, for them, yeah, yeah, you know? So this idea of doing something kind of fun with this and the whole idea of Vespa delivery could be really fun to kind of mess with, you know? Yeah. I love it. And especially like if you, if you guys are trying to build your own, like, portfolio projects to personal projects, things like this. This is such a great opportunity to like build out uniforms and cool little collateral. That's so oh, different. And it really H, shows. Uh, apron, like a, do an apron, do apron, a, uh, do the helmets. Helmet. Yep. Yeah. The, the back of the like box for the food takeout and stuff like that. Like, yeah, there's so many cool little things. T-shirts. Like I love the like slanted type for this. This is looking actually really nice. Cool. Cool. I love this, man. Yeah. So this would be kind of fun to play with. I think too, like I, if I had the time, I'd go and look at like some uh, typical racing stripes that were actually used and maybe mimic those. So mm -hmm. one thing I like to do is show the client that I've, I've pulled it from relevant re things and that gives them stories to tell when, uh, you know, like one of the, one of the clients we did something for, and they have a be beautiful mural mural inside the restaurant yeah. and the owner tells the story every time. Uh, and, and sometimes I don't think you know, you have to pull the person away. <laughs> he'll, he'll, he'll sit there and tell them for about an hour, but there's a, you're giving them something to be really proud about when it comes to their brand and their logo, you know? And yeah. so, uh, I, I love that idea with these kinds of things. So, um, let's see maybe what, uh, what a, a simple pattern might look like for this guy too. Yeah. And you have, this, whenever you're designing these like logos, I think for a lot of people who are just getting started in graphic design, you have to think about it. This is more than just a logo for somebody. Mm -hmm. Like, how are you going to empower their business? How do you give them the tools to be successful? So think about that when you're building these things out, you say, all right, this is a cool logo, but like, how is it going to be used daily? What is the story that I'm trying to help them convey? How do I help them business? Like, do I need to give them better social media templates? How do I, you know, think about that, put yourself in their position, yeah. try to figure out what you can do for people. Dude, I love that idea. Yeah. I mean, it's just the beginning. And I, and I, you know, we were talking the other day uh, with a group of other designers and we we're talking about how upselling is such an important thing. And, and you're right. Like if you're finishing up a logo with someone, start talking to them about, well, do you need bags? Do you need stickers? Do you need hats? Do you need some apparel? Like get them now before while they're fresh and they're they're loving everything that you're working on because again this just is this is the entryway 
in so yeah. many, you know, everything else you're going to do is really some what continues on and be, they become a client, you know, yeah. uh, not just a one, one job kind of uh, client at that point, you know? So yeah, this, that pattern's pretty sick. That looks really, really cool. Even, oh yeah. Even on, you can even mess with that, with that, get it on like a super dark green, maybe, you know, there's a, such cool stuff you can do with that. That's really cool. That's really cool. All right. What else do we have? So we can do where are we at five minutes. Um, let's look it over. Oh, one of the other things I like to do is, and now that I'm only showing two usually per, um, per pitch, but I do like to show some of the finished ones kind of like together at a, like a, at a glance kind of thing, even if it's just for my own, my own kind of idea. I want to see how these look together. So I'll bring them like this and make a page here where I can see them all at a glance. And it, you never know, one might just stand out and go, you know what, going back to my, it, my rationale and everything that I wanted to do here, does one of them really work? You know, I'm going to probably, I've got my choice. What do you, what do you think as far as the winner? when it comes to just everything that we were trying to, to say and do at the very beginning. Any ideas? Oh, there he is. Hello. Hey, <laughs> welcome back. Well, Missed we just finished. Thanks so much, everybody. No. <laughs> <laughs> Tune in tomorrow when Alex actually gets his internet back. <laughs> we just reviewed Alex's portfolio. You guys were ruthless. <laughs> no, as you should be. If you, if you guys don't like my work, feel free to DM me. How bad I am. It's fine. We're, we're I both guarantee in I'm hard on we're, we're in that boat. We're in that boat together, man. Yeah. Exactly. So, uh, I, I, for a second there, I thought you were really thinking hard because this was your, this was your, your pose. You were like, <laughs> that's, that's all I was going for. I just wanted that. <laughs> Anyways, I missed you guys. Welcome back. Let's get Welcome going. back. We got so, yeah, two minutes like, to tell design feedback. So make sure you're posting yeah. it inside of discord so we can look at it and give you guys some constructive feedback. Yeah. So here, I'm going to do this really quick so we can get maybe a poll on what, if anybody wants to, this is uh, come on, give me that. Don't you just love the type type box sometimes? <laughs> I got this big old fat one, but I'm gonna leave that there because it's probably gonna be easier for me to, to invest with. But what do you think? Like what, um, going back to what we we promised, which, what's, what's, what are the two you would show the client, you know? Oh man, I'm a big fan of only showing one logo to a client. Yeah, I, oh wow, you I'm, really do it like that? I am that kind of guy. I just do so much research and strategy work beforehand. Good, good like, dude. We do like a minimum of 80 to 120 hours worth of research and strategy. Yes. Before we go into any project. So yeah. Um, yeah. So I we're pretty far along in terms of what the goals are, how we're going to achieve it. And everybody's aligned before I go into here's the logo and the collateral and all that stuff. Yep. Um, so I typically only do one. If I was to do two logos from your selection, Oh man, there's so many good ones. I, I really like the Vespa delivery service. That came together last yeah. second. Really, <laughs> yeah. really cool. Uh, and I, I'm i going to have to say, I like the black letter one. I do too. Four. So four and five are my favorite. But let's see what chat says. We got yeah. one, two. Michael says two. Lucette says one. Voodoo Val says two and four. Taylor nice. says four and five. Terry says two and five. Ariana <laughs> says two and five. Tahani says two and five. Krimsha says Krishma says two. Victor one and two. Sounds like nice. two and five is kind of the go-to. Yeah. Yeah. Like I, I, it's so funny too, because again, it's your personal taste. It's mm -hmm. but I personal always try, taste for pasta. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I always try to I, I do try to take that out of the mix. I go back like you're saying. Uh same with my typical it's so robust before we even do anything that yeah. when i shows uh, the two that i'm going to show i, I got to get to that one level that's pretty i love that idea it's but, just because every time i do the two or three i get the like okay let's put them yeah. together thing and i yes i don't know why maybe it's just how i present yeah. <laughs> i just can't break that cycle and it just burns me out like we typically whenever i feel like when i work at branding agencies 
we work so hard, we present multiple client projects or options, and then we internally know which one's the winner anyway. So yes, you're right. That's true. So you might as well just show that my like, but upfront, the client knows they're only seeing one, right? It's not a surprise Correct. to them. No, no, and I think that's not. the number one mistake with a lot of that people go in thinking, I can make this a, a one concept thing. You, you can't just change it on them. <laughs> you, no. can, you gotta be upfront with how many they're going to see the rounds of revisions, whatever you're going to do. Yeah. So, you know, communication transparency is absolutely crucial and key no matter where you work or how you work, but yeah, do that communicate, stop trying to like act like, yeah, I think designers need to open up the curtains and yeah. open up the feedback and work more collaboratively with your clients. Yeah. Don't, don't go the madman route where it's like they're waiting for the reveal and exactly. it's just, and they turn the board over and it's like, ta-da, no, 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 no. Walk them through it, man. Every exactly. time. <laughs> so we've got the actual design challenge feedback now. Let me Ooh, pull up are we my... ready? I'm so excited. This will be great. I saw some good stuff in there earlier. Let's see what we got. Perfect. So Chloe says, this is my first challenge post. I'm very new to Illustrator. I made my Madala look a strained eyeball. <laughs> Let's start it. Oh, it's all a PNG. So we're gonna have to just look at it here. Let me scroll in. I can't scroll in. Ugh. Well, we can barely see it because it's PNG, but it looks great. I like the step and repeat around the edges. Uh, I like the internal um, kind of bow ties with circles around it. Uh, I think for me, just because also it's really small, I yeah. would say that the inside line weight on there is a little tough. Everything else is much bigger. So you kind of lose the inside, I guess, eyeball strain stuff that you're talking about. Those like little veins in the eyes, but mm -hmm. that, what about you? What do you think, Nick? Let's see. I'm trying to figure out. This is the, is this, this the one close. from close? Yeah, there we go. Let's look at, Ooh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's, a, it's the foundation. It's the wireframe for a very cool design. I think you just got to get either thicker line weights with a lot of those other ones. Yep. Fill, fills and and lines should probably be treated a little more equally. And I'm not sure, it looks like the the outer ring could use some ornateness to it to, instead of just having those blocks, maybe it's just in progress. Yeah. But I think you're you're off, It's if it's your first one, great job. Yeah, I would say, yeah, just maybe you could, like you said, instead of doing those blocks, because those blocks feel so heavy, I would mm -hmm. just do, instead of having to feel like you have to do step and repeat for the whole thing, I would just do a circle to capsulate the whole thing and you're good to go. Yeah. That's good. yeah Great yeah, yeah. job for your first challenge. Well done. Not bad. Ooh. So Merciful Mer Mercial Forte says yes. a date with Andrew Hawkeye, India. This is so addictive. This is great. Great use wow. of the step and repeat. Uh, great use of scale. You did a really good job. Oh, yeah. Everything's got nice spacing. Good. You know, yep. it's a little more. Um, it almost as it opens up, it, things get a little more wider spread. There's a good sense of like the hierarchy in the middle is very tight and then it gets a little bit lighter and lighter. I, I especially love the the way the outer petals gradate into the black. There's, yeah, I think that's you know, super cool. It'd be a great poster. I could see these like a black light poster. Mm -hmm. or, uh, where... on, on some felt. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That'd be so cool. You know, like pro tip, get your stuff screen printed and put a black light on that. Exactly, great. dude. Yeah, that's really great. And then Black Becky says day eight. Day eight. This is intense. This is a lot wow. of work. Well done. That's really cool. And I like how in the petals, it's not like it's totally symmetrical. It feels like mm -hmm. there's some unique things kind of happening. It feels yeah, there's cool. There's a nice layering. Mm -hmm. You could definitely, this would be a great, like, uh, reminds me of like adult coloring books mm. when you, you know, where you get the markers out and then like, you can go to town on this one. Cause you, the neat thing about it, like in those leaves in the middle, you're kind of creating the, the gradient uh, edges already by doing the smaller and smaller, smaller petal. So yeah. I can see okay. some really cool color going in there. Yeah, this is a great idea. Just start your own coloring book uh, <laughs> because everybody during COVID right now is yep. doing puzzles and these coloring books. So great way to de-stress at night with a cup of tea or something. Man, sell it. Yeah, celebrate and then sell it. <laughs> exactly. This has been awesome. Great stuff. Ooh, bringing color to it. I like it. I yeah, like this one's that. great. I don't know what you use for the Adobe color. If you used Adobe color or if you just leveraged kind of one of the the we talked about it earlier, the color 
treatment tools from yes. Adobe <laughs> or in Illustrator. It looks really great. Great color palette. Mm -hmm. Man, I, there's something really great about the tonal value that everything has the, it's in the same kind of family by picking a green, a yellow, a red, then you've got like that mustard color, then the tan color, then there's the blues and the purple, mm -hmm. um, even the line weight, like it could have been an easy mistake to just turn that line black, but yeah. doing a dark, dark, dark purple or blue lets it sing a lot more, you know, with some harmony there. It really looks nice. Yeah, this That's is very cool. This is really incredible. Great job with keeping all the line work consistent throughout it. And yeah, yeah, it's awesome. I, I think too, these challenges are just the beginning. Like you could take this now and turn that into some really great packaging signature illustration yeah. that gets used for like like a, a tea package or coffee or or you know some uh, Zen sound tape or something. I, I there's, you could do anything with these things. You yeah. you've done the hard part, right? Like. This just expand just, on this. Yeah, just keep going. <laughs> exactly. We're, we're looking going. forward to it. <laughs> Don't stop. <laughs> Simone says this is our work. Yeah, that's Let's... cool. I'm trying to think. How did how oh, would wow. I have done this? This is this reminds me of one of my favorite skateboard graphics that I've ever had. So points oh, to wow. you for that. Nice. Uh, man, this is tough. This is <laughs> really good work. Yeah. I, you know, what's funny is by just the, the difference in color treatment, obviously one being a solid one, having some like, like ombre, yeah. you know, yeah. With that there's, they look like two totally different images. When you look at them, I can almost see the one on the right feels like I'd see it on like a porcelain, like, you know, mm. uh, Voss or something like, you know, and yeah. then the one on the left, just like, man, that just that rich stone kind of, uh, blue color. And the way it looks, I, I can look in there and I'm almost looking like it looks like there's a bit of a siren il illustration or silhouette in that inner pedal. Yeah. Like the, yeah. Oh, it's all it's all it's on the out ones as well. Yeah. Yeah. I, I like that you varied the inner circles on the throughout the, the piece. And even Voodoo says, I, this looks like a tile. I love it. Yeah, mm -hmm. it, it absolutely does. It's really incredible. It's, you can it's hard a, to do. A, like a mandala like this so you can make done. a great like tile backsplash for some tile company yeah see that exactly. on the back of a of a nice kitchen you know <laughs> yep, absolutely that's really cool that's really cool and Which then we got a couple get? of uh from yesterday so yeah it was great work everybody yeah should we check out some more i think that's all we have for today unfortunately let's see but we can get back into a little bit more designing for a little bit that's true let's do that let's do that Excellent. All right. All right. It's on. It's ready to share. Is it? Are we catching it? It's all sharing right now. Let's see. Want me to just yep. stop it and try it again? <laughs> <laughs> there we are. Perfect. Sweet. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, man, I'm trying to think, should we do... What can we do some quick stuff with? We can either do... Well, so we just yeah. did the number five and I yes. don't think we have... I guess we did have a, like a tile pattern with it. Yeah. I know you're a big fan of mocking things up. Maybe we yeah. take five and I don't know, throw Ooh. it against something or maybe Let's there's a collateral see. piece for it or something. Yeah, I'm going to try to find... Even if it's just like finding something really... At this stage, if we're doing that stuff that's really, really quick, um, let's say... Uh, Maybe there's a, let me see if I can find help you in this. Yeah, I'm trying to find quest. something just super clean and easy to do, just to, just to see how things are going to work, you know? Um, yeah, yeah. Let's see. Here we go. So, there we go. Let me just, right. I just wanted to mess around with a few here because I really love that terracotta color here. I've also just sent you a little Vespa image from Unsplash. If you want Ooh, as well. nice. Okay. So again, just seeing how this thing would work is always good to see here. Obviously, I think I've been I, I've been using Dimension like crazy. Yeah, yeah. To me, it's just it's the game changer for all this stuff. Um, for something quick, though, I mean. There's, there's enough tools on here to, to mess around with and do something really, really cool. Um, let's say, 
even here. Sometimes too, just, just knocking back opacity a little bit helps a little bit, you know, just so you can start seeing how everything looks. Uh, what did you send me? Uh, put it in our little Zoom chat. Oh, let's get chat. Where is that? Sometimes it, it hurts to have so many windows open. <laughs> Absolutely. I totally understand that. Let's see. Uh, more and chat. There we are. Nice. Is that two of them? There's two little options cool. just in case you want them, but I figured you could probably throw the logo on the side of a Vespa. And Let's see. Just, it was. Oh, that. yes. That's perfect, dude. Mamma mia. <laughs> there we are. Just the copy pasta. <laughs> So let's grab, uh, we had a, I think I finalized that one a little bit more. So maybe what we could do is just turn these to white maybe. Yeah. Uh, whoops, what did I do wrong here? There we go. So all the red will be white. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> Cool. So I'm just going to maybe I'll multiply these two or maybe make the uh, the whole thing. I can make maybe a little bit just to flatten it a little bit group. <laughs> that would be hilarious, dude. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And see chat like how quick that is, like just grabbing an image really quickly from a stock photo website. You can quickly start selling these concepts to your clients, like just by Taking this little back end of the Vespa, all we did was throw our logo on it super, super fast. We didn't even go into Photoshop for this, like exactly if we wanted to. But look at this, two Vespas. You have a whole gang of Vespas now to like deliver all your food. <laughs> I, exactly. Perfect. Yeah. You've created a, an yeah. arsenal, a brigade of exactly. these things, right? There is so. actually in San Francisco, there is a, a, a Golden Gate Park group of like Vespa owners and they have all souped up custom Vespas. I think they would like this. <laughs> I love it. You know, just something cool. I think this one's perfect where you can, when you can get those ones that are like straight on mm -hmm. kind of, you know, there. Um, what's another thing? I wonder if there's like, um, oh, I'm going to see if I can find something kind of cool. Uh, looking for that, sh like that typical, sh very hipster chef. Um, um apron mm -hmm. you know what i'm talking about i see it on every cooking show <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to, oh yeah what is it called there's a brand that i think makes yeah, it has now, like right? a little has a great little like block logo on it yeah i think it's an um, h right i think it is right i found just a barbecue one so i'm just gonna try that really quick so we can crop this we don't need all that And then maybe this one we could try. Um, I think our Quanto, this guy would look kind of cool. There we go. Yeah, binging with Babish's apron. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty much anybody who's doing those like chef things now has yep. like, that one brand. They're yeah. expensive. They're like two or 300 bucks or something. That's like what that. I thought, man. Like so we're just trying out some different things. I think like a, I would love to see if there's a black uh, coffee to go cup. Let's see. Ooh. What does this one look like? Yeah, Voodoo Val goes a takeout he's insulated bag. Like a DoorDash yeah. folks will do it. That That'd would be, be a great, that's like, either a dimension object or uh, like a yellow images has some pretty good mock-ups. Oh yeah, for sure. Those would be perfect for that, where you can like really wrap it with a pattern if you wanted to or something like that. Yep. This one might just look great on here as well. Oh, I have it as a multiply. Let's take that off. Better normal. <laughs> Lindsay Palmer goes, that's how you know they have too much money It's by those Two those aprons. aprons. <laughs> yeah, I could have exactly. told you that by the lenses that they were using. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, man. Let's see what else we could do. So I, yeah, I think even the, which one was our, this, 
where was this guy? Yeah, this guy would look great on there too. Yeah, not That's too cool. bad, you know? And all these things like are just such great touch points for your client to see and just understand how their brand's gonna interact with things. Yeah, yeah, man. You know, there's so much good stuff that you can mess around with and play with. Um, trying to think if there's a quick, uh, what I'm looking at some dimension models really quick to see if there's something we could do really fast and fun. Oh, there we go. I'll also look as well. Okay, so here we go. I'm gonna go, let's save this guy to the library. So the first thing I typically will do is uh, I've got, I'm gonna use a shopping bag here that's about that size. We'll uh, center this in here nice and good. Perfect. So with that selected, I'm gonna right click, add it to my library just like that. And yeah. then here we go. So we got ourselves a little bag here. And if I go to my libraries, and I believe this is go to pasta, look who's waiting for me. Well, you don't go. even have to copy pasta, you just drag it. <laughs> <laughs> I had to. Yep, there we go. And you make it nice and fill the space there. It's kind of cool. Right. You can even customize the handles and Look all those good things. You know, wow. wow. Make these, you can get that red on the inside here, Oof. which is really cool. Uh, let's see, bag with that, go here. So when you have something like this, I think uh, getting the inside a color, you'd have to just bring in a swatch of that red, I think, right? Is that how you would do it? Uh, what, like, well, so the way that you have it right now, where you're yeah. using such a large image, I would yeah. just, uh, Oh, just do the color. Just, just the material color would be that red because you'd want that probably for the handles anyways. There you go. Uh, so that side piece. So yeah, I would just do that and then duplicate that art onto the back as well. Perfect. Let me get back to, uh, the mention there. There we go. Cool. So you would just go. Stephanie asked back. what program is this? This is Adobe dimension. This yeah. is a 3d just mock-up and creative tool. Um, it's, you can get pretty crazy with it. It's pretty amazing. I mean, yeah. you, the stuff you could do with it, uh, it's just never ending. It's just unbelievable. When my class is doing this for the first time and, and just like a week and a half, what they've been able to accomplish on this program is just like, it's incredible. It's just yeah. incredible. You know, um, real quickly too, I can take this and just, if I give it a shot like that. Yeah, you can throw that background in there. The, yeah, um, the famous restaurant background exactly. in the back. Yeah, there. Perfect Oops. occasion for that. Exactly. So I'm going to bring this down a little bit here. It takes some getting used to, but I, I got to tell you, everybody who has used it is self-taught. Like, it's just incredible how you can mess around with these things. And in just a few seconds, like, I'm just going to find the coffee cup here. Where's that guy? He's way up here up there. There we go. It knows where you're putting stuff and it puts it in automatic, like you name it. But I, look at that one. Woo. That's just how I like it. Look at that. Just like that. <laughs> uh, the controllability is just great. You take this here and then basically you're going to line that back up this way. Looks like we're still off. So you got to look at it from every angle. Get it here. And then you can just plop it down on the ground. Perfect. I can go back to my libraries. I can bring this guy right over like, here. Do a fireside background or a kitchen. Yeah. <laughs> exactly, it's, right? It's a little bit more uh, <laughs> difficult to do that within Dimension right yeah. now, just because this yeah. is already a three. So I can give you a little bit more background on this background. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah. Nailed it. Used the two <laughs> words at once. Uh, so this background is actually a three-dimensional project piece essentially so what he yeah. can do is he can model and match the lighting from the environment it has its own modeling lights and all that stuff kind of built into it yeah uh, and it has this like ground plane in the foreground where you can rest your objects and the shadows should be tracing in real time so while you could do a fake background matching the environment is really really difficult without having yeah. these kind of pre-built 
assets. Yeah. Um, so that's why he can't just throw in a fireside back yeah. on for how quickly we're going about it. Right exactly. Now. So again, too, like you could do, this is great. You're just doing a, you get this quick render test to see how your lighting's looking and everything looks great. Um, to show how fast, I mean, like literally you're building these assets just so quickly and there's all different yep. kinds of good ones we can bring in. Let's say uh, we're going to have to have a, a coffee roaster, I'm assuming uh, on oh, premises, right? <laughs> <have> that espresso. <laughs> there we go. So again, I can go back to Illustrator and let's do this one a little bit different where maybe we want, we're going to bring in the black logo here. Change this up. And the great thing, if you guys have not used Dimension yet, is Nick pressed that the real-time render button and he yes. can kind of see what that lighting and shadows were actually doing. But whenever you render it, it also gives you a really like really high fidelity export for you to yeah. use for mock-ups or to present to a client. You can also, it gives you a layered PSD at the end of it if you so choose. And yes. you can go in there and go tweak your values and add in a little bit more extra noise grain textures anything you need to do to like really finesse things yeah so definitely so just, give dimension to try yeah i'm just i'm going to show you how fast this is you literally are just you can make something kind of cool here um i might even find like a, a cool little official stamp or something that shows like roast date if you want to do something like that take this add it to library go back to dimension go back to libraries and there's that you bring it in and you can see I've created three assets in overtime. Yep. And he could also adjust the material on all of these. So if he doesn't like the shine on it, he yep. can adjust kind of how it acts. It doesn't have to be just plastic or reflective. It can kind of have like a more matte texture yeah. and things like that. So, so you can, yeah, you can go opacity. You can get, if you do want to make it, full like that works for a lot of cool stuff if you're trying to get a metallic shine on like your aluminum can or things like that um for here too i think what i would do is just go what to um you can actually just put in a paper as the background you know rather than or you make it matte mm -hmm. so all of a sudden it's getting you can change this around a little bit it has so much cool stuff you can even put like light oak yeah, and then there's also <laughs> those substance materials. There's a couple that are like already baked into the program, but if you really wanted to get crazy, crazy, crazy with it, you can also get like a substance materials license so you can really fine tune yeah. textures and grains and repetitive elements and it, substance materials is insane. So. And, and I think, you know, with like Adobe Capture, if you capture like stone or granite or something, you can turn that into a surface that you can uh, then use for this, which is yep. so cool. So you just mess around with these things. Have a marble. That looks very <laughs> coffee cup. Yeah, exactly. There you go. So you can yeah. see like, there we are. So we're just, we've made some fun stuff just for the heck of it. And it, you know, if you want to do this, to me, this is the best way to build a few things that, cause I'm even seeing clients are starting to see some of those free mockups over and over again. Like, yeah. oh, I've seen that sign before. Yeah. <laughs> so why not make them something you know, totally custom and unique for this based on our brand and everything that we are doing. So yeah. that's and, really the best way to do it, man. And now camera phones are so good. You can make your own mock-ups. Like think about yes. that people when you're walking around like, oh, that could be a really cool sign that I can use. Or you see a business maybe going in or, or, or shutting down that you can take a photo, bring it into Photoshop, make your own little mock-ups really quickly. It's just yeah. a great way of building one, your case studies in a way that me as a hiring manager or somebody like that, like who sees portfolios all day. If I yeah. see the same mock-up all the time, like, like Nick said, it, it can get too repetitive. It doesn't feel like there's a high level of like effort. So make it feel fresh and new and try to make your mock-ups look photorealistic yeah. as possible. Just Stop as original as your art, right? Like your art's original, make those mock-ups the same thing. Plus when you're in the middle of that packaging project, like anytime I've got, we, we're sending something uh, to print, I will show what you can do with Dimension now is you can share a 3D link yeah. and anyone, it, does, it doesn't matter what pro platform they're on, it comes through basically web browsers. They will get a completely movable 3D model and that it actually works best on an, iPad, on an iPhone or your mobile phone because you can move it around. And now they can see it in real time. And a lot of times they have the confidence now to sit, hit press, 
hit, get sign off on that press sheet because yeah. they've seen a, a workable live one, yeah. which is just great to have. And Mallory asked, so it's just drag and drop? Yes, it's uh, pretty much just drag and drop. Like and a, you and can get really crazy tuning. with it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And there's a lot of fine tuning you can do, but for people who are just getting into a bit like graphic design and the creative process and things, just throw it on there. You can get it done really quick. So yeah, yeah lots of fine tuning you can do. Yeah, it. yeah. I, I I will sh if if you don't mind, I will show you what a student of mine um, has done. That's actually pretty amazing. Um, I think we have like yeah. All right, cool. 30 seconds. Let's try this now. Here we go. I just want to show you, uh, this is one of my st uh, students' projects. She's first time on Dimension, and you'll see it in a second here. Hopefully we are, of course, it's in that last tense. There it is, <laughs> come on, and boom. So she's doing wow. a whole line of cosmetics based on Fender guitars. So that's awesome. It's a fun little project to get to do. Um, definitely, definitely try out uh, Dimension for sure. Absolutely. It's a great accompaniment to everything we're doing. Well, thank you everybody for hanging out with us today. Nick, it was a pleasure working with you for the last two days. I really you appreciate too, bud. it. Yeah, uh, man. Peter Del Tondo is on in four minutes. So definitely stick around, hang out with us. And thank you for tuning in, everybody. Bye, guys. See y'all later.